In 1204, Muslim soldiers from the Delhi Sultanate began the Islamic conquest of Bengal. They were led by Bukhadiyur Kilji. At the time, Bengal was ruled by its last Hindu king, Laxman Sena. Bukhadiyar sneaked into the Sena capital disguised as a horse trader. He was accompanied by some of his cavalrymen. Bukhadiyar and his cavalry secretly made their way into the royal palace, where King Laxman Sena was dining during a feast. Bukhadiyar and his men overpowered the guards. The last Hindu king quickly slipped away through the back door into the surrounding jungle, never to be heard of again. This coup by Bahidiyar was the dawn of five centuries of Islamic rule in Bengal. The region became the eastern frontier of the Islamic world, which, at the time, stretched from Spain in the west to Bengal in the east. Bahidiyar was a Ghurid general who absorbed Bengal into the Ghurid sphere of power and influence. At the time, the Ghurid sphere stretched from Persia to Bengal. Bukhadiyar issued a gold coin to celebrate his conquest of the Sena capital. The coin was struck in the name of his overlord, Muhammad of Gore, the Sultan of Delhi. On one side, the coin depicted a Turkish cavalryman charging at full gallop and holding a mace in hand. Beneath the image was the inscription Gaudi of EJ, meaning on the conquest of Gauda. The city of Gauda became known as Gauda the Muslims. It was the capital of Bengal for many years. In the years after Bukhadiyar's conquest, the rest of Bengal gradually fell to Muslim rule. Throughout the 1200s, Delhi's governors in Bengal issued coins resembling the horseman coin of Bukhadiyar. After conquering North Bengal, Bukhadiyar proceeded to invade Tibet. His Tibetan campaign was a disaster. Bukhadiyar died while retreating from Tibet. By the 14th century, Delhi lost control of Bengal after Muslim governors began to rebel. Three city-states emerged, including Lakhnadi in North Bengal, Sanargan in East Bengal and Satgan in South Bengal. In 1303, the northeastern Silhet region was annexed by the army of Sultan Shamsuddin Faraz Shah. Aided by Sufi leader Shah Jalal, the conquerors of Silhet deposed the last Hindu king Govinda. In 1340, the southeastern Chittagong region was annexed by the army of Sultan Fakhruddin Mubarak Shah. Meanwhile, the port and harbor of Chittagong was well known to the Arabs and Persians. In 1338, Shamsuddin Ilyas Shah became the ruler of Satgan in South Bengal. In 1342, Ilyas Shah defeated Sultan Aladdin Ali Shah of Lakhnadi in North Bengal. In 1352, Ilyas Shah defeated Sultan Iktiaruddin Ghazi Shah of Sanargan in East Bengal. Ilyas Shah united the three sultanates of North, South, and East Bengal into a single kingdom. Ilyas Shah was instrumental in the unification of Bengal. For the first time in centuries, Bengal emerged as a single unified state. Also, for the first time in history, the term Bengal became the common name for the region. The independent Bengal Sultanate emerged as one of the most important Muslim states in the world. After uniting Bengal, Ilyas Shah launched military campaigns across the neighborhood. He led the first Muslim army into Nepal. He invaded Orissa and sacked its capital city of Katak. His army penetrated deep into Assam. The Sultan of Delhi invaded Bengal in response to Ilyas Shah's invasions. Delhi occupied the Bengali capital, which forced Ilyas Shah to retreat to the island fortress of Ektala. Delhi laid siege on the Ektala fort for two months. When the Delhi army began to retreat, Ilyas Shah and his army began to pursue the Delhi forces. The Bengal army pursued the Delhi army deep into northern India. In his pursuit, Ilyas Shah reached as far as Varanasi. He extended Bengal's territory up to the Koshi River. The extent of Ilyas Shah's military campaigns, including his occupation of major Indian cultural centers, was considered world-conquering in the context of medieval India. Ilyas Shah was dubbed the Second Alexander. Ilyas Shah's son and successor Sultan Sikandar Shah continued to project the imperial ambitions of his father. He defeated the Sultan of Delhi in the Second Bengal-Delhi War. The Sultan of Delhi signed a peace treaty with the Sultan of Bengal in 1359. Delhi finally recognized the independence of Bengal. The Sultan of Delhi also gifted a gold crown to the Sultan of Bengal as a mark of respect. Sikandar Shah reigned for three decades. In 1373, he commissioned the construction of the largest mosque in the Indian subcontinent. Completed in 1375, the Adina Mosque continues to be one of the largest mosques ever built in South Asia. It is located in the now-ruined city of Pandua, which was the first capital of the independent Bengal Sultanate. 
The mosque projected the imperial ambitions of the early sultans of Bengal. Coins were the most important symbol of sovereignty for the Sultan of Bengal. A mint was established in the main town of every district. The mint produced coins. The coins were inscribed with the name of the Sultan. Towns hosting a mint became known as mint towns. The mint towns served as provincial capitals of the Bengal Sultanate. Since the reign of the third Sultan Gaya Sudden Azam Shah, Bengal began to foster diplomatic links with China and many Muslim states. The third sultan sent the first Bengali Muslim embassies to Ming China. China was seen as a potential counterweight to the Delhi Sultanate. China later helped to resolve disputes between Bengal and regional states. In the Middle East, the third sultan sponsored the construction of religious schools in the Islamic holy cities of Mecca and Medina. He exchanged letters with the Persian poet Hafez. Sultan Gaya Sudden Azam Shah had a profound regard for the law and also for literature. The third sultan often spent his time in Sinargan in East Bengal. He received ambassadors in Sinargan. He was also buried in Sinargan, and his tomb is preserved in modern-day central Bangladesh. During the reign of the fifth sultan, Shaibuddin Bayezid Shah, Bengal gifted a giraffe to the emperor of China. The Chinese mistakenly thought the giraffe was a unicorn. On the 20th of September in 1414, the ambassador of Bengal presented the giraffe to the Ming dynasty court. The giraffe was originally from Malindi in what is now Kenya. It was first shipped to Bengal and then sent to China. Bengal and China exchanged several embassies between 1405 and 1433. The Chinese treasure voyages led by Admiral Zheng he visited Bengal. This was during the period of China's maritime contact with Asia and Africa under the Yongle Emperor. Bengal had robust maritime trade links. Bengali ships were the largest ships in the region. A Bengali ship carried embassies from Brunei and Sumatra to China. Many merchants from the Bengal Sultanate lived in Malacca. Bengal traded with the Maldives and shell currency. It had trade links with Africa, Persia, and Arabia. The Moroccan traveler Ibn Battuta visited Bengal. He arrived in the port of Chittagong. He went to Sinargan. He also visited Silhat. Around 1415, the Hindu landlord Raja Ganesha took control of Bengal. Raja Ganesha was an usurper who overthrew the Ilya Shahi dynasty. The Grand Mufti of Bengal appealed to the Sultan of neighboring Janpur to restore Muslim rule. The Janpur army marched into Bengal during the reign of Raja Ganesha. The Grand Mufti gave an ultimatum to Raja Ganesha to convert to Islam. Instead, Raja Ganesha offered his son for conversion. As a result, the first native Bengali Muslim dynasty was born. The son of Raja Ganesha converted to Islam and assumed the title of Jalaluddin Muhammad Shah. Jalaluddin was one of the most important sultans of Bengal. He enacted a series of reforms. He issued new coins, began a new style of Bengali architecture, gave shelter to the fleeing king of Arakan, and promoted relations with China and the Middle East. The Ilyas Shahi dynasty was restored in 1435 by Sultan Mahmud Shah. The restored Ilyas Shahi rulers reigned till 1487. Between 1487 and 1494, Bengal was ruled by a series of Abyssinian sultans. The Abyssinians were from what is now Ethiopia. They came to Bengal as mercenaries. Abyssinian generals usurped the throne in 1487. For Abyssinian sultans ruled in succession. The Abyssinians were known as the Habshi. Habshi Sultan Sefud and Firaz Shah built the imposing Firaz Minar in the capital city of Gaur. Sultan Aladdin Hussein Shah gained control of Bengal in 1494. He founded the Hussein Shahi dynasty. The Hussein Shahi period is regarded as the golden age of the Bengal Sultanate. Muslims and Hindus jointly took part in his government. Muslim and Hindu poets produced important works of Bengali literature. Sultan Hussein Shah oversaw the expansion of Bengal's territory into Assam, Orissa, Arakan, and Tripura. Under Hussein Shah, the territory of Bengal extended up to Janpur in North India. Under Hussein Shah's orders, his military commander Shah Ismail Ghazi conquered Assam. Hussein Shah's son Prince Daniel was appointed as the governor of Assam. Hussein Shah conquered Tripura and large parts of Orissa. The Pratapgad kingdom became a vassal state. In the southeast, the military of Bengal supported the restoration of the throne of Arakan by expelling Burmese forces. Arakan became a vassal state of the Bengal Sultanate. Its currency and court was fashioned after the Bengal Sultanate. 
The rulers of Arakan began to adopt Muslim titles and pledged allegiance to the Sultan of Bengal. Bengali Muslim influence in Arakan continued for 300 years. Between 1430 and 1638, a total of 16 Arakanese kings are recorded to have used Muslim titles. The most enduring influence of Indo-Islamic influence in Arakan is currency. Coins of the Morocco period provide crucial evidence of the influence of Bengal and Arakan. After the restoration of Min Salman, Arakanese coins were inspired by Bengali currency. Post-restoration Arakanese coinage featured Bengali and Persian Arabic scripts. Many Bengali aristocrats settled in Arakan and became ministers, court officials, and military commanders. Some of the most prominent poets of medieval Bengali literature lived in Arakan, including Alayal and Dulit Qazi. Arakan was a haven for Bengali art and culture. The poet Alayal was a versatile genius. He was an accomplished horseman and spoke five languages. Alayal wrote six books, including a book on the tales of Alexander the Great. While Bengali was the most commonly spoken language in the Sultanate, Persian was used as an official language. The cities of the Bengal Sultanate were full of buildings with glazed tiles. A glimpse of houses in the Bengal Sultanate can be seen in the Book of Alexander published by Sultan Nusrat Shah. The Bengal curved roof style emerged during the Bengal Sultanate. The architecture of the Bengal Sultanate had native Bengali elements combined with Persian, Arab, Turkic, and Byzantine influence. Bengali mosques were either rectangular or square in shape. Rectangular mosques had multiple domes. Square mosques carried a single dome. Mosques mainly came in two colors, red brick or black stone. One of the largest mosques is the 60 Dome Mosque. The Shona mosques are fine examples of black stone rectangular mosques. Many of these mosques have rich terracotta artwork. Bugha Mosque in Rajshahi, Pathrail Mosque in Furidpur, and the Shankar Pasha Shahi Mosque in Silhet. The Sanakan Mosque in Burma lies in ruins. The Pambari Mosque in Assam has been preserved. Imperial mosques had a built-in throne for the Sultan. These thrones can be viewed in the Kasumba Mosque and Adina Mosque. By the 16th century, the Bengal Sultanate began to decline. In 1529, the first Mughal Emperor Babur invaded Bengal. The conqueror Sher Shah Suri occupied Bengal and its capital city of Gaur. Some of Sher Shah's governors later rebelled and re-established the Bengal Sultanate. The Pashtun Karani dynasty was the last reigning dynasty of the Bengal Sultanate. Under the Karanis, Bengal regained its lost territory. The Karani dynasty extended the territory of the Bengal Sultanate from Bihar in the west to Assam in the east, and from Kuch Behar in the north to Orissa in the south. The Karani dynasty was defeated at the Battle of Rajmahal by the third Mughal Emperor Akbar. The defeat of the Karanis in 1576 marked the definitive end of the Bengal Sultanate. The nobleman Isa Khan, a former prime minister of the Bengal Sultanate, took control of eastern Bengal. Isa Khan led a confederation of 12 Muslim and Hindu landlords, called the 12 Buyats. Isa Khan resisted the expansion of Mughal rule in the Delta region of East Bengal. Isa Khan's navy had a great deal of success in repelling the Mughal navy. Mughal historians like Abul Fazl described the fine warboats of Isa Khan's navy. In 1578, the 12 Buyans defeated Mughal Viceroy Khan Jahan I on the Meghna River. In 1584, Isa Khan's navy defeated a Mughal flotilla on the Brahmaputra River. In 1597, Isa Khan's navy dealt a massive defeat to the Mughal navy on the Padma River. In this battle, Mughal Viceroy Man Singh I lost his son after Isa Khan's navy surrounded the Mughal navy on four sides. In 1580, the English traveler Ralph Fitch wrote, For here are so many rivers and lands that the Mughals flee from one to the another and Mughal horsemen cannot prevail against the Bengalis. The Mughals eventually managed to subdue Isa Khan. Emperor Akbar began enacting important reforms, which shaped the future of Bengal. In November 1586, Emperor Akbar introduced the Subha administration across the empire. The consolidation of Mughal power in Bengal began in 1594. Bengal became the richest part of the Mughal empire. Akbar readapted the Bengali calendar, which promoted increased agricultural production. 
forests were cleared to make way for new farming communities. Bengal supplied most of India's rice. Mughal Bengal saw the growth of organized industry in textiles due its large population of weavers and artisans, as well as increased shipbuilding and production of gunpowder. The massive expansion of farmland was centered around the creation of Sufi-led villages, which substantially increased the Muslim population. The Mughal built a new imperial garrison in Dhaka in 1610. The new city was named after the fourth Mughal emperor Jahangir. It was called Jahangirnagar. The city was founded by Islam Khan I. It was the longest capital of Mughal Bengal, being the center of provincial administration for 75 years. The city had well laid out gardens, tombs, mosques, bazaars, temples, houses, and pavilions. Dhaka became home to members of the Mughal imperial family, including the sons of Mughal emperors who lived in the city as either governors or officials of the Mughal government. This included Emperor Azam Shah, who lived in Dhaka as a viceroy. Prince Shah Shuja, who claimed the Mughal throne, also lived in Dhaka. Emperor Shah Jahan visited Dhaka in 1624. Dhaka became a very prosperous town because it was the center of the fabric trade. The city attracted Armenian, Greek, Dutch, French, Portuguese, and English traders. In 1666, Mughal Viceroy Shistakhan defeated Arakan and its Portuguese allies in the Battle of Chittagong. As a result, Portuguese pirates were expelled from Chittagong. Mughal rule extended into southeastern Bengal. Bengal was the easternmost frontier of the Mughal Empire. By the 17th century, Bengal was one of the most affluent regions in the world, with an extremely rich elite and aristocracy. Bengali weavers, artisans, craftsmen, and farmers profited from the growth of international trade in Bengal. In 1717, the capital of Bengal was shifted by Prime Minister Morshidat Yuli Khan to a new city named after himself. Murshidabad became the seat of the Nawab of Bengal. The Mughal emperor recognized the Nawab as the hereditary ruler of Bengal. The Nawab of Bengal became the largest contributor to the Mughal treasury. The Nawabs entered into a series of trading agreements with European companies like the British East India Company, the French East India Company, and the Dutch East India Company. Murshidabad witnessed the construction of new administrative buildings, gardens, palaces, mosques, temples, and mansions. The city was full of bankers, traders, artisans, musicians, painters, and workers. European factories were set up on the outskirts of many cities in Bengal, including Dhaka, Rajshahi, Chittagong, and Murshidabad. As the first Nawab, Murshidat Yuli Khan oversaw the emergence of Bengal as an increasingly independent state, upon which the Mughal emperor relied on for most of his finances. Bengal under the Nawabs can be compared with Egypt in the 1800s under Muhammad Ali Pasha, the Ottoman viceroy who sought to make Egypt independent. The second Nawab Sarfaraz Khan was a pious ruler. The third Nawab Shuja Muhammad Khan carried out administrative reforms. A new dynasty emerged under the fourth Nawab Alavardi Khan. Bengal began to be subjected to ruthless raids by the Hindu Maratha Bargi cavalry. The British East India Company became increasingly powerful. In 1756, the fifth and last Nawab Shirajuddallah sought to expel the British from their base in Fort William. The Nawab captured Fort William in 1756 and massacred British soldiers in the Black Hole of Calcutta. War erupted by 1757. The Nawab was betrayed by his general Mir Jaffer before the Battle of Plassey, which led to Robert Clive taking control of Bengal. Shiraj was the last independent Nawab of Bengal. The British began military raids across the region. The city of Dhaka was largely destroyed by British military raids. British policies led to deindustrialization in Bengal, as the region lost all its wealth. The Nawab of Bengal was styled as the Nawab of not just Bengal, but the Nawab of Bengal, Bihar, and Orissa. The territory of Mughal Bengal covered the three regions of Bengal, Bihar, and Orissa. Defeat at the hands of the British led to the collapse of the richest and wealthiest state in the Indian subcontinent. The Mughal Empire was one of the three gunpowder empires, along with the Ottoman Empire and the Safavid Empire. Bengal was the key producer of gunpowder for the Mughals. The largest Mughal artillery were also produced in Bengal. 
The fall of the last independent Nawab of Bengal led to the loss of independence and sovereignty across the Indian subcontinent in the following century.